stove which is basically a do-it-yourself kit using stainless steel components uh, most of which you can get from IKEA uh, like I said this is my third version so I've made a couple changes if you've watched my other videos uh, you'll know that the main changes have been uh, the addition of much larger uh, air holes here on the top rim so that the uh, pot can breathe when you have your uh, your pot your kettle on top of it uh, secondly the secondary air holes are, are much bigger. They're about this size here. I think this is a quarter of an inch. Um, yeah, so I've added uh, those much bigger and the uh, secondary air holes. I've gone back to using the grate that comes with the, the IKEA pot. Uh, what I found, uh, originally I was trying to uh, make smaller holes so that the secondary, sorry, the primary air uh, allowed in a lot less wood gas and hopefully produced a cleaner burning uh, stove, but what I found was that it was actually burning a lot slower, and uh, the flame, you know, was kind of contained within the ring of the pot, and it was taking about 30 minutes to boil a liter of water. So that, to me, although it burned a lot cleaner, it wasn't really that usable. So uh, this one is very similar to the first version. However, the major difference between this one and that one is the secondary air holes are the same size as this one so they're much bigger hopefully providing more uh, secondary air producing a cleaner burn and still maintaining uh, a level of uh, flame that's uh, usable to me with the addition of uh, greater wood gas from the, the larger primary air holes so I started this uh, I'm sure if you could see that about 15 minutes ago, four, yeah, 15 minutes ago now. Uh, so now it's just really uh, starting to gasify nicely. Uh, sorry I didn't video the uh, lighting of the stove, but essentially I just put in some uh, hand sanitizer on the top there, a couple squirts, lit it up, and uh, you know, it lit up uh, very nicely. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a liter of water on there. Uh, we're at about the 15 minute mark, and. Uh, Let's see how long it takes to uh, boil that. Okay, it's uh, it's minus 15 degrees out. Uh, this kettle's been sitting out here for a while. Uh, a lot of that smoke that you're seeing right now is actually just the moisture coming off of the kettle. Uh, there is a little bit of smoke from me putting it on there, but most of it is actually the moisture coming off the kettle. It's been sitting out here, it was wet, and it's uh, very cold out. We got some fresh snow last night, and uh, I'm freezing my ass off out here making this video. But let's see how long it takes to burn, uh, sorry, boil, and uh, I'll come back after after it's ready to boil. We're back. Uh, we're at about 30 minutes now. And uh, as you recall, I put it on in about 15 or 16 minutes. Uh, this thing's about getting ready to boil. One thing I just uh, wanted to mention that I, uh, I forgot, I made a little riser that I forgot to put on here. And it's basically a tuna can. It allows the flame to come up and uh, touch the, uh, the bottom of the pot or the kettle at a more ideal point. So it's not really uh, suffocating the flame. So we'll take it off now that it's actually boiling, and you can see the result of that. It's uh, kind of like a little chimney. Helps concentrate the flame a little bit right on the bottom of the pot, and I put it on maybe about a minute or two just before it started to boil. So uh, had I put that on earlier, probably have a, a faster boil time, but it was about 15 minutes to boil one liter of water, which is uh, four cups of water. So very pleased with that result much better than uh, the second version certainly on par with the first version and uh, seems to be burning nice and cleanly so I think I'll make a nicer uh, 
bring there something a little bit more permanent and hopefully if I can uh, try to find something that's made from stainless steel but uh, I think that's the way to go okay so uh, again we're at about 31 minutes now so we'll let it continue to go and uh, we'll see how long this burns for it'll be uh, a runtime test from this point forward okay I'll see you guys soon just wanted to take a couple uh, angled shots so you can see what the burn looks like and you can see it's really this concentrator ring is working very nicely you have a nice uh, tight flame in the middle there really nice and concentrated and uh, I think this is the final version uh, if I happen to make another version it'll be adjustable but I think this is uh, I'm very pleased with this design. <laughs> Look at that, just beautiful. And as you can see, we get a very nice tall flame. Uh, as you recall, in the second version, uh, the flame barely even left the, the pot, so much happier a lot more wood gas in this one burning very nicely and uh, I think this is the way to go wow look at that jet really burning like a, <laughs> a rocket jet engine there <laughs> very nice okay I'll see you guys in a bit so we're back and I just uh, I think the flame is about dying down now, but I uh, wanted to show you, you can't really see it now, I think I might have missed it, but you actually, uh, a few moments ago, you could see the suction action as it was pulling some of the flame down, you could see where it would uh, normally be sucking the oxygen down from the top, uh, which is what you expect to see in a T-LUD top lift updraft uh, design. And it seems like the flame has pretty much died down now. So, in the field, if you were uh, doing this, it's actually quite hot there. So, all you would have to do is throw in a couple twigs, give it a little bit more fuel, some wood gas, and you'll probably see that ignite in just a second. Hopefully. But there is quite a bit of heat coming off of that still. And again, we're at uh, 51 minutes and the flame has died down. So a little bit longer than the first version, uh, less than the second version. But overall, this is a really good combination of. Uh, runtime and usable flame and I'm very very pleased with this version and uh, yeah I think this is what we're gonna stick with I don't see myself making any more modifications to this one so you do see some flame uh, starting up now on the new fuel that I put in there let the rest of it catch and uh, if this were twigs or something uh, it would catch a lot faster but uh, it's you know it's wood pellets it's a lot denser it doesn't uh, doesn't go up as quickly but you'll probably start to see some gasification again and hopefully I can show you that uh, that vortex suction action as you see the flame coming up but uh, there's, suction, there's suction going on right in the middle and it was sucking the flame kind of right down into the middle just at the end before the flame died out and that was a great opportunity to see how uh, this thing actually works like the physics of what's actually going on in here so let's have a look and you'll probably see let's see if I can get a better angle what's happening here so if you look very carefully in the center there you see how the flame is going down right at the center that's because uh, what actually happens in this type of a stove there you go that's a great shot of it it's like a, uh, a whirlpool effect there what actually happens here when you light this thing up initially 
the inner pot will start to heat up. And as you know, heat rises. So as that inner pot gets hotter and hotter and hotter, there is a gap between this outside can and the inside can, and that will start to force air to rise, exit the secondary air holes, and while it's doing that, it's going to create a suction right in the center where from the bottom primary air holes it starts to pull in uh, the smoke and the soot and the carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide and that's what you have as the fuel that's driving the secondary burn and that all comes out through the secondary air holes so that's really what's happening here so as it heats up even stronger you see that it starts to overcome uh, that suction and the flame does rise but essentially that's the way this works and it really is a beautiful flame I'm very very happy with it so we'll leave it at that um, like the first and the second test had I not added any fuel to it this would have produced uh, usable heat for another 20 maybe 30 minutes even just to keep uh, you know your food warm definitely the first 10 to 15 minutes a good simmer but again you see the uh, you see the suction action happening here. That is, that is quite remarkable. Look at that. So that is, uh, that's a great, great way to demonstrate what's actually happening in this stove. Okay, guys, we'll leave it at that, and uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, the next one that you see from me will probably be. Uh, probably be a demonstration of uh, a variable design. Yes. We're at, uh, I forgot to turn off the uh, stopwatch, but we're at an hour and 27 minutes. And I just came outside to check on it. And I just wanted to show you that you still have a very good usable coals in there. As uh, the level of fuel gets closer and closer to the bottom primary air, it actually gets a lot more uh, a lot more air and that is quite a bit of heat still being put out so at an hour and a half with one load of wood pellets you still have very good heat there uh, so I forget when we stopped this originally but it was uh, I think just under an hour maybe 45 minutes or something so from that point until now you could be simmering uh, food uh, you know boiling water distilling water, whatever it is that you're trying to do, uh, keeping your hands warm, if you're using this when you're camping. Um, so an hour and a half, and I suspect that's going to go down to complete ash, and I would say, uh, I'll come back to confirm this, but I would say that you're going to get a good two hours of usable heat out of this, and that is very, very impressive. For three cups of wood pellets, for one full load of fuel. That is very impressive. So I'm very, very happy with that. Uh, so that'll be it, but uh, as you can see, I'm gonna toss in a couple of wood pellets just to show you that that is hot enough to ignite it. Let's burn my hand there. But, uh, at an hour and 30 minutes you'll see that is hot enough to ignite that that almost immediately starts to burn so you can see very usable heat almost two full hours of usable heat from just three cups of wood pellets that is very impressive and you can see even uh, it, it's starting to gasify that's that's remarkable Wow very happy I couldn't be happier with this design to be honest with you um, you know what it's not producing a blue flame it is somewhat orange which means it's it's a little rich but in terms of what I want to accomplish which is a, a good nice tall flame very strong heat this is just remarkable very happy with this so I will uh, I will put in some diagrams uh, showing you how this works, showing you the exact dimensions of uh, the holes, how many holes, and exactly how to build it. And uh, yeah, I encourage you guys to go ahead and build this. You know, again, you can see the uh, vortex 
the suction, pulling the air down as it's getting sucked down and coming back up through the outside wall, sorry, the in inner wall, and out through those secondary air holes. It's exactly how this wood cast stove works. Fantastic. Okay, guys, I'll see you later. Uh, hopefully, I have some uh, new videos to post soon. Catch you later.